So now that we've been through anesthetic buffering in our other video, I want to take you into a technique that I picked up online that I think you'll really like. Now this is something that you can use chairside for a minimal cost, which I know dentists like that, <laughs> and you can do it very effectively and very efficiently right before you inject for your patients. Now, this was actually a technique that was devised. Well, it's probably, I guess I shouldn't say it's devised by these guys, but they made a very good paper on it and a good study on it. And the two guys that I'm referencing are Jason Goodchild, DMD, and you've got PharmD, who is Mark Donaldson. So he's a pharmacist. And uh, together, they have worked on basically making a way for dentists to do this very simply. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in this video. Again, we've got our one mil syringe, we've got our sodium bicarbonate. What you do is essentially you pull off these caps, it's going to roll away on it, and you expose the needle. At this point, we're going to pull back the plunger to the 10 on the syringe. Now remember that the 10 denotes 0.1 mil. It's not 10 mils. This is a one mil syringe. So we're dealing with a tenth of that, which again is 0.1 mil. So once you draw that back, you're going to then take this, express the air into the vial, and then you're going to draw back again to the 10 on the syringe, which allows you then to ensure that you've voided the syringe of any air, and when you draw back the solution, the sodium bicarbonate, it's not going to have any bubbles within it. So Jason Goodchild and Mark Donaldson have actually done a great job in their paper of describing three different ways of doing this. Now this is the most straightforward way, in my opinion, because all you're doing is adding the bicarbonate into the carpule. It's really easy to remember the amounts to use. They have two other ways of doing it, some which I guess would involve taking some of the anesthetic out, maybe using a little bit different volumes of sodium bicarbonate. This truly is the simplest way. Now, when you're doing this, the reason you can do it is that the stopper in your carpule actually has a little bit of room where it can still move. So this carpule isn't totally loaded with anesthetic, it's got a little bit of space, a little forgiveness yet, to allow you to put this amount of solution in. So you're gonna observe, as we're putting this in, that the stopper is gonna move out. So you wanna do it kind of slowly, so that you don't push too fast and blow this out the end. Now, you probably won't, I've tried pushing pretty hard on these, and it will pop out a little bit, but generally they'll stay in place. So when you put this in, you insert it into the carpule, oh, there we are, and all you do is just express it in. You're gonna see some little bubbles that form. There they are. And you're done. Now you'll notice, just like I mentioned, this stopper is poking out a little bit, but this still fits within your syringe. You'll be able to inject no problem for your patient. I'm now gonna recreate a brilliant demo again by Jason Goodchild and Mark Donaldson that shows exactly what happens when you inject your bicarb into your carpule. Now, when I first did this technique, I was kind of wondering what was going on. So I put the bicarb in and I thought to myself, do I need to shake this up? Do I need to wait? You know, you saw the little bubbles that formed when I injected. I wasn't sure what exactly was happening within the carpule. Now this really clears it up and I don't think I'm even gonna talk, I'm just gonna do it and the results will speak for themselves. So. What I've done is I've loaded some bicarb with some food coloring and you're going to be able to see exactly what happens for yourself. So I'm going to inject this now. Oh no, you forgot to aspirate. <laughs> no, we didn't. We're okay. So that's it. That is as simple as it can get. So basically I just demonstrated to you a way that you can quickly and effectively do this chair side and have great results. Now I will use this again in situations where there's infection. I'll use it in cases where perhaps you got a third molar to take out and it's somewhat impacted and the patient isn't sedated. You're just freezing them up and you want them to be more profoundly numb. This is a great application for this stuff. So basically go ahead and do this. Use it for whatever type of injection you want to do and use it in those select situations where you need a little bit of help getting people numb. Some of you might have picked up on this already. This does say it's a single dose vial, right? So discard the unused portions. These vials are quite costly. So if you were going to use this and discard it after taking 0.1 mil out, um, you'd be 
paying way too much money. So you'd be better off getting those systems that already exist. And actually, some of the systems now, what they do is they have one of these in their dispenser and it's just permanently hooked up and you draw out from a bit of a catheter that's in it.